Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, lesson 11. Hello, hello there. The volume formula of a pyramid and cone. Classwork Exploratory Challenge says use the provided manipulatives to aid you in answering the questions below. Well, we can't use manipulatives if we don't, if we're in a video. So I'm just bringing this picture in. So if you had a pyramid or a cone and you had six of them, then you can create a cube. Okay. So the formula, what's the formula for a pyramid? We would be working towards what that formula is using these manipulatives here is what they're talking about. All right. So these aren't very high. It would take two to get to this height right here. So anyhow, without using putting your hands right on these and and manipulating them into a cube, it's hard to explain what is going on here. But let's have a go. What is the formula to find the area of a triangle? Okay, we already know that a triangle, a right triangle is a half a rectangle and the area of a rectangle is length times width or base times height. So the area of a triangle equals one half its base times its height. Explain why the formula works. Okay, so like I said before, the reason the formula works is because if we have this triangle with a base B, with a base B, struggle in here, and a height H, and that's 90 degrees, and I take and copy this and move it over to here to show you that they're identical and rotate it 90 degrees. Then I'm off a little bit, so let me fix it. Then I get this square, if you will, a rectangle. We don't know it's a square. Um, and therefore this base would end up being this base over here and this height would be this height over here and this is another 90 degree angle. Okay, so the area of a rectangle is base times height or length times width and the formula for a triangle is half of that because if we cut a rectangle in half then we have one half base times height. Okay, so let's move on. Or do you want that in words? I guess I could bring that in in words. So let's get rid of this. And the formula works because the area of a triangle is half the area of a, rect area of a rectangle with the same base and same height, which I showed you in that diagram. Part B, your number one says, what is the formula to find the volume of a triangular prism? Now we're talking volume. Okay, so here is a triangular prism. And the base is the shape of the diagram. So even though this is sitting with a rectangle on the bottom, on the floor, that is not a rectangular prism. You want to ask yourself, self, what is the shape of this thing? Looking at it from one of the, so this is a rectangle here, a rectangle here, and a rectangle on this side. But looking at it from the end point, that is a triangle, so that is a triangular prism. The formula to find the volume of a triangular prism is the same as finding the base area one half base times height. So we say volume equals capital B, which is equivalent to this, okay, the base area times the height of the prism, which is here. So the formula to find the volume of a triangular prism is volume equals capital B times H, where capital B is the base area one half base times height. Now it says explain why this works. Okay, so the reason this works, a triangular prism is essentially a stack of congruent triangles. Taking the area of a triangle repeatedly is like multiplying by the height of the prism. 
then the volume of the prism would be the sum of the areas of all of the congruent triangles, which is the same as the area of one triangle multiplied by the height of the prism. Okay, part C now says, what is the formula to find the volume of a cone or pyramid? Okay, so here is a cone, and here's what they mean by a rectangular or a pyramid. Rectangular prism is called a pyramid. So the formula to find the volume of a cone or a pyramid is volume equals one third the base area times height. So if I find the area of this circle by using this radius r, area is pi r squared. Pi r squared divided by three times whatever its height is. And its height is the distance from the vertex down to the center of the circle on the base. Okay, same goes with this rectangular prism or pyramid, I mean. Uh, cones and pyramids both have volume of one third, capital B being the base area times the height. Then it says explain why this formula works. Okay, so here's the reasoning. A triangular prism is essentially a stack of congruent triangles. Taking the area of a triangle repeatedly is like multiplying by the height of the prism. Okay. So then the volume of the prism would be the sum of the areas of all of the congruent triangles, which is the same as the area of one triangle multiplied by the height of the prism. Okay. Okay, my mistake, I dragged that down from B by mistake. It's actually the answers can vary in some, but some students may recall seeing a demonstration in grade eight related to the number of cones, which took three to equal the volume of a cylinder with the same base area and height, leading to an explanation of where the one third came from. I believe if you were in my class, I showed a video and they took a cone, filled it three times and had a cylinder of the same height and same uh, radius of the cone, and it took three cones to fill that cylinder. Okay, page two brings us to exercise one and two. So pause the video, see if you can do these, and then come back and check. Okay, here we go. So a cone fits inside a cylinder so that their bases are the same and their heights are the same. So here is a cylinder with a base radius of five and the cone is inside with the dash mark. And that also has a radius of five. So their bases are the same. Calculate the volume that is inside the cylinder, but outside the cone. So what we need to do is find the volume of the cylinder. There's two ways to do this. Two ways to do this. Volume of the cylinder equals Actually, no. The volume of the area outside the cone equals the volume of the cylinder minus the volume of the cone. So the volume is going to equal the volume of the cylinder and volume of a cylinder. So I'm just going to substitute in our um, formulas. The volume of a cylinder is base area times height minus the volume of a cone, which is one third base times height. Okay, so right at this point here is where I'm talking about you can do this two different ways. So I'm going to finish this, but this is the key point that you might be able to see something. So the volume of the area that's not in the cone, but is in the cylinder is, and that's base area times height. And the base area is um, pi r squared. So that would be pi r squared times height minus one third 
pi r squared times height. So the volume equals pi 5 squared times the height 12 minus 1 third pi 5 squared times 12. Okay, well, look what happens. Pi, so let's just finish this first and then I'll explain. So we're going to get 25 times 12. which is 300, 300 pi minus one third of 300 pi, okay? Well, one third of 300 is 100. So the volume is going to be 300 pi minus 100 pi, which equals 200 pi units cubed. And we could multiply that by 3.14, blah, blah, blah. So the answer would be 628 approximately square cubic units, all right? But let's go back up to this asterisk here. And notice right here where it says base times height minus one third base times height, we might recognize that as being one minus a third. So if I put three thirds here, three thirds is one, I'm not changing the value here when I multiply by one, but now I can subtract that fraction. Three thirds minus one third is two thirds base times height. So if I'm looking for the area outside the cone, all I had to do is take the two thirds because one third plus two thirds equals the whole thing. And if I did that, then I'd get two thirds of 300 pi just shortening this up a little bit. And the threes cancel and I get two times 100 or 200 pi. So either way works, um, but this way is quicker. All right, number two. A square pyramid has a volume of 245 cubic inches. The height of the pyramid is 15 inches. What is the area of the base of the pyramid? What is the length of one of the sides of the bases? All right, so before I continue, let me bring in a square pyramid. Okay, so here's my pyramid. So I'm gonna label this up. A square pyramid has a volume of 245 cubic inches. So there is a given, our total volume. The height of the pyramid here is 15 inches. What is the area of the base of the pyramid? Okay, <clears throat> so another key word here is square, which means A is equal to B. That's a square pyramid. So the volume of a pyramid is one third the base area times the height. Okay, write the formula, substitute the givens, so 245 would go over here, and I'm not gonna worry about the unit of measurement right now. 245 equals one third the base times the height. Okay, so then all I have to do is one third and 15 reduces that 15 down to five, 15 divided by three. So then I have 245, equals 5b. And to get b by itself, the base area, I divide by 5. So the base area equals 5 times 4 is 20, with a remainder of 4, and 9 times 5 is 45. So the base area is 49. The base is a square. It says it right here. So a square is length times width equals 49, okay? Well, if they're the same, that would be like saying length times length or length squared. Following me here? So 49 is L squared. To find out what the length is of one of the sides, I take the square root of both sides and I find L to equal seven the square root of 49. 
So A equals seven and B equals seven because seven times seven is 49. It is a square pyramid. So the area of the base of the pyramid is 49 inches. They told us inches in this case. Square, it's area, 49 square inches. So that's part of the question. What is the length of one side? The length is, let me rewrite this because I should use my unit of measurement. So I'll just put L on the other side. L equals seven inches. Okay, so the base area is 49 square inches and the length of one of the sides is seven inches. Okay, page what? What are we on? Three? Yeah, page three. Number three. <clears throat> Use the diagram below to answer the questions that follow. So there's the diagram. We have a lateral length. That's what that's called, a lateral side. The lateral is square root of 137. The height is 11. <clears throat> so this is a triangle. It's a right triangle. We need to find Hello. We need to find the pencil so we can draw an R. <clears throat> That's the radius. Determine the volume of the cone. Give an exact answer. I'll explain what they mean by that in a moment. So first, we write the formula. Volume of a cone equals one third the base area times height. Volume equals one third. Base area is a circle. <clears throat> area of a circle is pi r squared times height. So now that we've got the formula, we substitute in our givens. Volume equals one third pi radius. We don't know. Height is 11. All right, I cannot finish this. I have a V that I don't know what it is and I have an R. I cannot solve a problem that has two unknowns, but I do have a right triangle. And we have a formula called the Pythagorean theorem that says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A can be our R, so R squared equals B squared I'm sorry, not equals, oof. R squared plus B squared equals C squared. So R squared plus 121, which is 11 squared, equals 137. The square root squared cancel, and we just get our radic hand as our answer. Subtract 121 from both sides, and I get 16. The square root of both sides will give us r. And obviously, r is a length. We don't want the negative, because uh, negative 4 is also the square root of 16. We want what's called the principal root, because distance is never negative. So r equals 4. So now I can finish this. v equals 1 third pi four squared times 11. V equals, and four squared is 16 times 11 is 176 over three, if you will, pi. See what I did? 16 times 11, 176, is that correct? So 16 times 11 is 176 divided by three, equals 58 and two thirds, okay? Put that back as a fraction, it does not reduce. And this just is units. So the volume is this units cubed, okay? So let's discuss this exact thing here. Pi is irrational, 
and there is no way to represent pi as a decimal that does not repeat or terminate. It just goes on forever and ever and ever. So if I said 176 over three like this, if I just took this and I said times pi and hit enter, and I said the answer is 184.30679, that is not an exact answer, that's an approximation. So whenever you see the word exact answer, it's basically telling you to leave it in pi form. So the answer is 176 thirds times pi units cubed. Okay, part B says to find the dimensions of a cone that is similar to this one here. Remember that R equals four, so I'm gonna change that right now. And let's put four in there. We got the radius to equal four, so this is four. All right, <clears throat> so I wanna find a cone that is similar. Well, similar means that all the sides are proportional and we just scale it up. So I could say the dimensions of a cone would be height equals, and I'm just going to double this. What's 11 times two? 22. Um, Radius, four times two. And lateral, well, I don't need to do the lateral. Once we have the height and the radius, that's all we need. So a cone that has a height of 22 and a radius of eight would be two times the size of this cone, okay? Uh, part C says to calculate the volume of the cone you described in part B in two ways. Hint, use the volume formula and the scaling principle for volume. Okay, so here we go. So for part C, I'm going to say V equals one third pi R squared height. V equals one third pi. And I'm using this one now, eight squared times height. So the volume equals one third. Well, let's just do it all at once. Let me get my calculator. 8 squared, enter, times 22, enter, divided by 3 or times a third, gives us a fraction. So we're just going to leave it at 1,408 over 3. So this is going to be 1,000, 1,408 over 3 pi units. Okay. So it went from 1,700 or 176 thirds pi to 1,408 thirds pi. So I doubled R. So what happened to the volume? So to find the ratio of that, I could just divide 1408 by 176. So 1408 divided by 176 is eight. And there's our R. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to use the scaling principle for volume. So remember that if we have a one to two ratio of sides, right? I doubled it. Jeez. What is this doing? Four times two is eight. 11 times two is 22. So it's a scale of one to two. Well, if I take the volume of that, remember from the prior lesson, that that would be as a ratio of one side cubed to the other side cubed. And one cubed is one and two cubed is eight. And that's where we got our eight times for the volume. I took 1,408 divided by 176 and I got eight. <clears throat> so in this situation, I would say volume equals eight times what I got here.
And when I do that, I get this. Okay, we get the same answer, but actually it's so much easier to just take the ratio of the sides, one to two, I doubled it, so it was one to two, cube that and get your eight and just multiply this answer by eight. Okay, number four. Gold has a density of 19.32 grams per centimeter cubed. If a square pyramid has a base edge of length five, keyword here, square. So if I have a square, <clears throat> excuse me, if I have a square, it's five by five and a height of six. So then if I picked a point somewhere, say here, okay, and drew segments down, let's do blue, like so. Okay, there's my square pyramid. <clears throat> okay, and the height from here, straight down perpendicular is six. And that's a right angle. Okay, so a mass of 942. So there's another given mass, 942 grams, length five centimeters, height six, mass 942 grams. So sometimes it's helpful to list everything you're given. Okay, <clears throat> so I made some room here. So what do we know? Density is 19.32 grams per cubic centimeter. Length equals five centimeters. Height equals six centimeters. Mass equals 942 grams. Stop right there. We have centimeters cubed, we have centimeters, we have centimeters, we have grams, we have grams. No conversion is necessary. And then we focus on what we are given right here. It's a reminder from a previous lesson that density is mass divided by volume. So what's it asking for? Gold has a density of pyramid, blah, 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 blah. Is the pyramid in fact solid gold? So we want to know if it's solid. If it is not, what reasons could explain why it's not? And it says to recall to use, to find density, use the formula mass divided by volume. So let's do that. So D equals M divided by V. We don't have V, uh-oh. We have density. We have mass. We can find the volume of what gold should be with respect to what we're given. Substituting my givens, I get 19.32 grams per centimeters cubed equals the mass 942 grams divided by volume. Okay. To get volume by itself, we just need to move the 942 G over as a numerator on the other side. So it'd be 942 G divided by this 19.32 grams per centimeter cubed. And picture this getting flipped, the grams will cancel and volume will be 942 divided by 19.32 and I get 48.75 blah blah blah. Okay, so let's just leave that as um, what 48 
48.76 centimeters cubed. Notice the grams cancel and we're left with cubic centimeters. So the volume with respect to this, so if it is gold, then it should take up a volume of 48.76 cubic centimeters. All right, that's what we're testing. So now we're going to find the volume of this. The volume of a pyramid is one third base area times height. Volume is one third base area is length times width times height. And it is square. I think it said it. Yes, if a square. So I don't want to use L and W. I like using S squared because it is a square side squared. So volume is one third side times side, which is side squared times height. Substitute in my givens, I get one third five is my side length squared height of six. One third of six is two and the volume equals five squared, which is 25 times two is 50. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So notice our volumes are not equal. So is the pyramid in fact solid gold? And the answer is no. This pyramid has a volume of 50 and the gold with this density and this weight only takes up 48.76 cubic centimeters. So there's 1.24 cubic centimeters that is unaccounted for. So either there is a blend of some other metals in with that gold, or there's a hollow center or something like that. Okay. Okay, page four brings us to the end of lesson 11. Hopefully you'll be able to do these now. Go for it. Go to your problem set.